I'm going to talk about Teresa's book just for one second, Michelle said. Um, just so, so you know how we're going to be, I want to, this is how we're going to handle it for now. At one point in time, we're going to get a little box up there. And that little box will have some words above it that says Jesus Handbook. Is that, do we say volume two or something like that? We've revised, updated, whatever it is. And then we'll have that over there with an amount. Every time that amount gets to $600, then we're going to buy 50 more books. We just, she just bought 50 more books based on everything that came in. That was just last week alone. So, and you can, and we'll, and we'll get a little box back there where you can just always put the monies in there for that. But just so you know, we just thought this is just kind of a fun thing for all of us. We're going to, the, the 50, every time we get 50, uh, any, any visitor that comes here is going to get one. Uh, people in the community, all the churches are going to be getting them, correct? Yeah. I mean, we'll be sending them 50 to 100 at a time. Yeah. And then it's just going to keep going and just keep going. And that's how all of us reach the world. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I mean, so we get to be a part of the ministry that she created, one of, one of hers. And that's how we're going to do it for now. If it starts getting too big and we need to bump that up to 100 and we need 1200 bucks to, to send out 100 then we'll, we'll just keep adding two. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, so it'll take us some time to get all that stuff together, but that's the plan right now. So uh, eventually you'll see a box in the back that says it. Tabitha will remind you um, uh, every week in regards to it, and then we're just going to keep this thing going. It's pretty exciting. Amen? Is that okay? Good? All right. Okay. Well, we're going to raise a hallelujah. We did that. I was hoping we were going to sing that song, and then I saw it on the list. And I thought, because at home, I don't sing the song, but I raise a hallelujah all the time. And it is just so much fun. So much fun. All right. So, and I told you before, I'm not even sure I ever even told the elders, I think I did, um, that uh, Chad Gonzalez is coming in August. And uh, he's the guy that wrote that book, Possessors of God? Of Possessors of Life. I read the book. Anyways, and um, Chris uh, used to play basketball with him, I think, at Rama back in the day. But anyways, he's got a, he's got a global ministry, and it really focuses about the power that raised Jesus' dead body from the grave lives in you, and he really brings that out, teaches it, and healings just follow this, uh, this ministry. They've got a real handle on plugged in and in tune to the Holy Spirit, and he's coming to our little church. You know, and just so you know, when these guys come, it's usually a five or a $10,000 day, not counting all that other stuff. They hotels and whatever, you know. And uh, so Johnny was asking about it. And he says, oh, no. He goes, we just go where God calls us, and God already has taken care of the finances for it. Amen. Well, see, do, do you believe like that? Yes, see, that's why I thought we'd start with, that, with the book. That's the way we're going to do it. It's, it's a done deal. We're just going to believe God's going to be bringing in the funds, and they're going to be going out, but you'll be able to see it. It's an exciting life serving, the God, serving God in this way. So today, the title of this message is God has done his part. It is complete. Now it's time for us to do our part and make our life complete in him. <laughs> Did you guys got that? Should I, should I read the title again? Okay. God has done his part. It's complete, done, finished. Now it's time for us to do our part and make our life complete in him. You see, when he's done his part, and his part was to make us complete in him. But if we don't get in him, and we're searching for all these things all the time, does anybody have a bulletin again in the front row somewhere? Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
I just want to find out where I'm supposed to be next week. Okay. <laughs> ha ha. Let me check my diary. <laughs> On the bulletin, it says that we walk by faith. Our life is to be walked by faith in faith. Do you understand what, what, what that means? That our walk in life is everything that you do. Everything you do is by faith. We walk by faith. And then it says we, we walk in love. So our walk, our life, is to always operate in love. That's walking in love. You don't go in and out. It's always. We always walk by faith. We always walk by love. We always walk led by the Spirit of God. Where's this Holy Spirit? Inside of you, mixing with your spirit. That when you got born again, spirit man is 100%. He doesn't get wore out. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't get tainted, polluted. He is always strong. Those other two parts, because we have, according to Thessalonians 5.23, we've got spirit, soul, and body. But spirit man is whole. When you got born again, God's spirit came into you. I mean, we, we need to get this revelation. All of us, okay? We need to understand this. His spirit is in you. Your spirit's 100% and strong. Amen. Now, thank you for that amen. amen. <laughs> I need to know that you're here and listening and reasonably alive. Amen? amen. amen. Okay, good grief. All right. Our part is to rest in the part that he has done. Wait, wait. I need you to understand that. Your part now is to rest in what God has already completed and done for all of mankind and especially you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach over here. <laughs> Our part is to receive what Jesus did on the cross. This is not a complicated thing. He accomplished stuff on the cross. Do you know what he accomplished? <laughs> he had the whole deal. Everything. When God was finished in chapter 2 of Genesis, his work was done. I'm tired. I've been war working so hard. I'm taking the rest of my life of eternity off. <laughs> you see, wait a minute. See, we need to get out of trying to understand God with our mind. And let the Spirit talk to us about God. And get that in your mind. Everything changes. For us to rest in what he has already done. That's all he wanted the Israelites to do. And they just couldn't get it. It was plain. He laid it out for them. But they just would go in after the things of the world and all that other stuff. Same stuff happens today. People want to be whole. Go see a psychiatrist. Go see a psychotherapist. They'll make you whole. Can you even imagine that for a minute? <laughs> well, I mean, God says in his word that he'll make us whole. And when you receive Christ, you know what happens? Spirit man is what? Whole. Completely and utterly whole. If faith man, if, if your body and your soul, if your soul wasn't doing so good after you got saved, 
you're still not doing good. If you were chubby before you got saved, you're still chubby. <laughs> Body wasn't impacted at all. Soul wasn't impacted. Not yet. Do you realize the importance of renewing your mind once spirit man is born again? Spirit man inside says, I'm going to data download. I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give it all to you. All that God has done for you, I'm unloading into you right now. You know why these people get up here and they shake? They're getting a glimpse of all that God has done. I keep telling you that. It's past tense. I can't, I don't know. A couple weeks ago, somebody just said, somebody said, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be victorious, you know. God's coming back for a victorious church. You know, we're going to be victorious. And again, that's a dumb thing to say. No, we have to start thinking differently. You know, in Isaiah 55, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our and, and that just should not be. Not anymore. Get the mind of Christ. Your thoughts should be exactly what his thoughts are. Your ways should be exactly walking in his ways. Which way are you going? Which way is God going? That's the way I'm going. Not complicated. All of a sudden, we, we feel that, well, I got to go to work tomorrow and everything changes. Nothing changes when you go to work. Where is spirit man? Is he still strong? Is he still complete? Is he still 100%? He's got muscles. Big muscles. Big muscles. Yeah, that's spirit man. And all spirit man wants to do is just pour into your heart. And once he pours into your heart and pours into your mind, you know what happens is this body lines up to the rest of God. Not the rest of God, the resting that God provided for us. And in that is everything you need for life and godliness. And outside of that, I don't really know what you need. Our part is to gain knowledge of and in Jesus. Know him. That word know is such an awesome thing. To know, to have knowledge. Him. Holy Spirit, Jesus has dumped all those things into our spirit. God has given us the key that unlocks all of that. And it begins with Abraham, in a sense, the father of faith. It's always been about faith. It's always been about believing. When did you get that measure of faith? You didn't get that measure of faith when you were saved. You've always had that measure of faith. Even unsaved people have a measure of faith. But you got the God kind of faith that operates with the God kind of spirit. Principles of gravity still work for heathens. Principles of giving still work for, for the unsaved. Principles of faith still work for the unsaved. They believe strongly in what they're doing, even when it's wrong. Why are you blessing those guys? Well, look at the centurion. Just, he wasn't saved. Just say the word. I've never heard and seen such faith in all my life. And he wasn't talking about an Israeli or an Israelite. Israelite. Our part begins by believing God's word. Thoroughly and utterly. And you take it all by faith. All by faith. I believe in God. Do you have a a good opinion of God? Well, if you know God, you're going to understand all of his attributes. And if the the gifts of the gifts of the Holy Gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, and all those wonderful things, those are the attributes of God. It starts with that there. 
And he's implanted that all inside of you. When you're saved, spirit man is complete and whole. Spirit man is in, gre- in agreement completely with the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that? Spirit man is completely in agreement with, with the Holy Spirit. Where is spirit man? So, where is spirit man? Spirit man, if you're saved, is inside of you and ignited and alive. Spirit man still has to deal with this soul and this body. The body is just kind of a, a tool. This thing up here it can really create havoc. You start filling it with stuff that's not coming from spirit man, you're in trouble. And when you get yourself in trouble up here, this body gets in trouble. That's right. You know, so many people back in, that, so many people that um, when their, their mind was just getting polluted with stuff, they'd, tar- they'd start taking drugs. And initially, well, I'm going to escape reality and I'm going to take some drugs. And after you keep doing that, it does something, not just to your mind, but to this body. And I've seen people that they keep using drugs and all their teeth are falling out and all and these things happen. And it begins to wear down on their organs. And then they die young when they shouldn't be. And it's all started up here because they weren't paying attention to what's going on inside here. If you're saved, spirit man's alive and well inside of you. And it's just like Jesus is knocking on the door, spirit man's saying, come on. I mean, we're good now, right? And, so, and, and spirit man's going to heaven and your body's going to be transformed and, and it's all that kind of stuff. But right now is when we need that rest. That rest and all that stuff that God gave us. You don't need it in heaven, boys and girls. You need it now. And he's given it freely to all of you that are called according to his purpose. And you are called, you, every one of you, are called and have a purpose. Therefore, he will equip you and he will give to you everything you need. You know, I was, I was thinking about, oh, let me, let me finish this. But I was thinking about what we, Michelle and I were talking about last week in Kings chapter 17. Um, and and I'll, maybe I'll forget. The other part. And, and these parts that I'm reading right now are things you have to do. Okay? You, you have to do this. You must get your soul and body to line up with spirit man, right? This is what you got to do. So don't, when I, there's, I, there's like 10 things I put here. Finish these 10 things and then go on to whatever you want to do in life. But if you'll finish these 10 things, it'll utterly and completely change your life. And then you'll be on track and good for the rest of your life. I, I mean... And like we were talking about, I said this last week, we're talking about it again in the prayer room. You've been given that measure of faith, right? I think that's in Romans chapter 3, Romans 12, verse 3. We've all got the measure of faith. And that faith, Jesus talks about, if you just had the faith in the size of a mustard seed, which is very tiny, then you can move mountains. And so we know that that measure is bigger than a seed, right? So we know that. So we got all the faith we need. We also know that it is the God kind of faith because it came from God. It's no separation between my faith and his faith. It's the same kind of faith. It's his faith. He put it in us. Spirit to spirit. He didn't put it in my body. He didn't put it in my soul. Spirit to spirit. Everything, all that he did, he rested and and he... The the Holy Spirit is transmitting all of that to our spirit. And what we need to do is get it from there into this physical realm and into this mental realm. And in doing that, we got to do a lot of calling things that are not as though they are. Believing that you have, when you pray, that you believe that you have, uh, believe that you have received. Believe that you have received. You see, that whole receiving thing and believe that it's on the way. If, when we talked about in Genesis, when God created everything, if you could just put yourself back there, and we, we, get, we were saying that the earth is 6,000 years old. 
And I don't care how old you think the Earth is, it doesn't matter to me, period. Call it a billion years old, okay? Whatever you want it, doesn't matter. The Earth is there, and then we have creation. And in that creation, if you could just imagine, God speaks these things over X amount of days, and then he says, it's done, I'm finished. And then everything, now God pulled back, right? Didn't add any more water to the earth. There was only two people at the time, right? So all that was there was enough for 8 billion people, and then some. Now, could you imagine that? Well, that's the way it went, isn't it? The whole globe was filled. It was done. There's enough food in the United States to, fill, to, to feed the world. You can use the rest of the world for recreation, I guess. Yet we still have starving communities and people and all sorts of nasty stuff. Why? They've slowly departed from the rest of God. They've slowly gone away from the, the light and gone towards the darkness. But if you could just imagine, so we're going to go back now 6,000 years and we're going to be on the, the ninth day, 10th day, 11th day, I don't know, the second week <laughs> after creation. By then, things are moving, right? right. Yeah. You know, the streams are flowing, the waves, I guess, are crashing, the wind might be blowing a little bit, I don't know, I mean, but we're just guessing, all right? The, che the trees, I mean, they were already eating, and God didn't give them a menu so he could go get some fast food or something. <laughs> he just said, it's all there around you, right? He provided everything for them ahead of time. You, you got that? Yeah. It was all provided ahead of time because he knew they were going to need that. And then God fell asleep. And he doesn't know anything about you needing anything. and doesn't know anything about your future. Doesn't need to, because, you know, things have faded away over the last 6,000 years, and he's gotten very tired. Is that what happened? No. Are you sure? Yes. So you're saying to me that he provides the same way for you now that he did then? Are you sure? Yes. You're positive. Yes. So you don't ever worry about provision. No. Positive? Yes. Nobody, nobody worries about it. No. God's taking care of it. <laughs> because he did it back then. In the beginning. He took care of it. Oh, Lord. I need money. I need it by Friday, Lord. I got to have money by Friday. The bill's are due. I know none of you guys have ever said that. That's just me. <laughs> Lord, I got to have it. You've already forgotten that he's taking care of everything, right? That's right. He's already, you've already forgotten. Yet we're such faith people. We trust God. At least that's what we say. But these circumstances pop up. We seem to lose our faith in everything. I was thinking about football, right? No. Super Bowl? I'm not going to say anything about it. Okay? Does everybody know how I feel about all these sports? Okay, then I'm not going to say anything about it ever again. All right? I'm just, yeah, I'm done with it all. We're done. Next. Yeah, next. But I happened to be, when I was a youngster, played football, and I was fortunate enough to be the quarterback. Right? And we had a play. It was called The Lonely End. And we'd be in the huddle, and the end would just go way out. And we'd look very sad like this. And then he would stand there. And then when the play would take off, I would roll over to the right. Like this, right? Everybody's going this way. Halfbacks are going this way. And I would go like this. And I would throw the ball as high and as far as I could over on the left side of the field. And this end was over there. But I knew by the time that ball got down there, he was going to be over there. Wow. I threw that ball before he was even looking. 
because that's where the ball needed to be because I knew he was going to end up there. You guys see any parallels there? Huh? Huh? Does God know? Is God God? Huh? He's pretty smart. Knows everything about you. He knows what you're thinking right now. You bad boy. You wicked, <laughs> nasty, nasty person. That's not God. He wouldn't. That was me. I was reading your thoughts. And that's what came out when I read your thoughts. Oh, you wicked child. You. He knows everything. I mean, what are you praying? We pray some of the dumbest prayers. God, you see how sick I am? Well, of course he sees you're sick. God, you know I'm sick. In case you don't know, I'm sick. Thank you for the Come on. No, we got we to gotta start changing some things up. No, and, and that scripture, is that 1st or 2nd uh, Peter, 1st Peter 2, 24? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's almost like I, Isaiah 53, except for one thing. And it's the, the past tense. It's the scripture that shakes every denomination because now we've got to figure out a way to get rid of it. Because it says that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's got to be your spirit healed. Your spirit was never sick, boys and girls. That's nonsense. Somebody tells you that, say, you're lying. You're lying to me. Okay, so let's come to grips with that. Anybody here ever have a surgery or something like that? Yeah. Anybody here have the flu? Been sick? Yeah, okay. Well, what did you do with 1 Peter 2.24? By your stripes, you were past tense healed. You walk in health and healing. Now, now do, you see, do you see something here? Oh, everybody's going... <laughs> Listen, you either believe the word or you don't. And if we believe it, then that's what comes out of my mouth. I was healed. How far does it go back? I'll go back 6,000 years. I'll go back to creation. I'll go back to the beginning because that's when everything was taken care of. Everything got launched back then. Do you understand that? We have all this stuff, the trees and the rivers and all of that, like Michelle said, there's no more oxygen been made. It's the same amount. People get all worked up about the polar ice caps. How dumb is that? Don't you think God knows what he's doing? Oh, but I got science on my side. You got nothing. You got nothing. I got God on my side. Well, you just have God. I got a computer. <laughs> uh, so where are we gonna where are we gonna fit into this thing? Where do we forget? And it, it all came with something I was thinking about. Someone said, you know what, I'm praying, believing God for this. You know, and, 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 and in this and this situation is rough, but we will be victorious. We're gonna, we're gonna get that victory. That's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. It's either been done and you are victorious and you walk in that victory. I started off with how we walk. We walk by faith. We walk led by the Spirit. We walk in victory. You walk in victory. You are victorious. And it's just like that faith thing. You've got that measure of faith. Well, then how is it that you can have less faith? You're not going to ever have less faith. You're just going to have more doubt. And when the doubt overshadows the faith, it looks like you don't have a whole lot of faith. And if the, if the victorious life, it seems to be overshadowed by defeat, you're only going to talk about defeat. When you're living in victory, you still have to get inside the spirit, man, and get that stuff released. 
But if you keep telling everybody how sick you are and how broke you are and how lacking you are, you're nullifying creation. Think about that. Why? Because he's done it all. Amen. Oh, man, I love that thing that I, I was just, when I was thinking about, you need to rest in, in his rest. That's what you need to do. Amen. You need to rest, and then you need, you, need, you need to know what he's done. It's a complete package. And if you want to live in the nonsense of just, well, be, I'm going to be just practical because this is the real world, John. No. That's the natural world, and there is a supernatural part. You're just talking about the tool. Oh, I feel like this, and my emotions get carried away like this. This is all part of the tool. Let spirit man out. Let him go. And then all of a sudden, your mouth begins to talk a little bit different. You begin to line up with spirit man. Spirit man lines up with the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I haven't even read any scriptures, and I apologize for that. Okay, so in God doing his part, all provision, all healings, the victorious life for all you believers is all past tense. Okay? Now come to grips with that. Okay, don't try to water it down. Don't try to skirt around it. Because you know what we need? You, you know what real unification is? When we are one in the Holy Spirit. And when we're one in the Holy Spirit, we got perfect agreement. Right? And when we're, we're one with the Holy Spirit, we're going to be one with Spirit Man. And Spirit Man's going to dominate this thing. And when this thing gets dominant, this thing begins to flower. And you're going to have that energy. You're going to feel good. You really are. And we're going to, there's going to, it's, the Bible says it's appointed to one time for every one of us to ship out and go home to die. Or appointed a time. And if the Lord doesn't come back before that time, we're going to die. But you can go out healthy. I mean, seriously, you don't have to suffer and die. Because so-and-so suffered and died, well, and and so-and-so, matter of fact, everybody I know is suffering and dying. You need to get out more. (laughs) You need to get some new friends. Younger friends, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) He has provided everything you need for life. He's provided everything you need for godliness. It's been provided. Are you tapping into it? That's all I'm asking. No, are you tapping into it? Is the enemy still playing racquetball with your brain? Or are you getting control of this thing? You're letting the spirit man say, hey, wait a minute, hold it. I'm walking the big, this is not a a self, what do they call it? A self-help positive thing. Even though God's language is very, very positive. There's nothing negative about God. He's positive. He's so positive, he's actually positive about your life. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you slap somebody in the face and they don't even do anything to you. <laughs> yeah, I was just unkind and I got away with it. I you. Thank you. Oh, we're not done yet. Well, because we're coming into some new stuff pretty soon. And he's, he's set you free. Already. See, some of this stuff is just a mind bender. All right? Wait a minute, though, because you don't know, John. I'm still in bondage. I do this, this, and this. Spirit man's been set free. All I'm asking you is... We, the Holy Spirit says he'll guide us into all truth. And, and he, he's just saying that. And he goes, look what I've done yeah. inside of you, a spirit man. Amen. Just look what I've done. Look what the Lord has done. Yeah. You got born again, and spirit man is alive and well and ready to show you 
what life is really all about. And all of these things now are going to begin to explode. And what does the world try to do? I mean, and I, I make fun of that science stuff uh, because it's worthy of making fun of. The world just tries to get you away from the things of God. Your strength and your victory is in Christ. Why would you want to get away? All those poor people. I mean, 90, 90% of Hollywood, they're all losers. They're all people void of God. There are any, there's very few that you'd go, boy, I'd like to pattern my life after you. I mean, they got a million dollars and they're rich and they're, they're killing themselves and they're on drugs. I remember when uh, we were growing up, like in, well, not we were growing up, but around the 80s and the 90s. I mean, every Hollywood person was in rehab. It was like the cool thing to do. If you weren't in rehab, then you weren't to star. They were all in rehab. Unbelievable. Oh, aren't you awesome? I mean, even Johnny Cash. That was a sad thing. Because I saw him on Johnny Carson, and he says, so... Johnny, he goes, the only woman that'll take me now is Betty Ford. <laughs> now, it's a rehab institution, you know. You guys going to know that, right? That's how sad that was. Even Johnny Cash ended up in rehab. All those guys. You know what? We don't have to do that. <laughs> we don't have to go down that road. And we can have a better life. I'm thinking about that bulletin. I want to extend it. We walk by faith. We walk in love. We walk led by the Spirit. And we, we walk in victory in this life. We walk in health. We walk in the abundant life. We walk in fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit. We're anxious for nothing, and we trust God completely. Amen. Does it sound good to you? No, I like the, the be anxious for nothing thing. And in all things, to be anxious. You know, I had no idea how I worry and how anxious I can get. You know, and I, I fight it, and I fight it. And you know what's been happening? I, it dawned on me these last few weeks. I go, why am I fighting this dumb thing for? I, I don't need to fight this. There's plenty of other battles, right? But if God says he's giving you the victorious life, I'm starting. Amen. If he says be anxious for nothing, I am not. You know, John Eckerman said to me a couple of things. He said a, a number of things, but one thing that was really, really profound. We were talking about some business issue maybe six months ago. can't remember. Or he was. He was sharing something. and No, I was sharing something. And then he just says, oh, John, God's got it. It was as if he got a prophetic word for me at the time, and he says, God's got it. And then I started listening to him. No matter what came up, he says, God's got it. Right. Well, did you pray about that? Did you hear the Lord? Are you sure? God's got it. Right. I don't need to pray about that. God's got it. Amen. Does he have it for your life? Yes. Huh? Can you just say God's got it? I don't need to be anxious about that. Why? God's got it. He did that way back when. I mean, in that Kings, Kings 17. And you remember that, okay? That was a great play. We won a lot of football games because of that play. Aside from the fact that that guy was four inches taller than anybody else. That's why. Throw the bomb. Oh, Keith. I mean, these guys would be jumping on him, you know, just heads this high. Just catch the ball. Catch the ball. Well, in, the, in Kings with Elijah, when he, he's getting chased out of town, and God tells him, go to this place over here, and the ravens will feed you. You ever been fed by ravens? You ever eat a raven? <laughs> That'd be counterintuitive there, I think, if you're supposed to be getting fed by them, unless they are the food that God provided for you. The ravens come, but they didn't come to the place he was at. He had to go to this place. And the ravens were already sent. 
the ravens got sent. And they're flying. And he's over there. And you know where they're flying to? They're flying to that little cave over here. And he's over there. But he obeyed God because God said, go there. And he did. And they had a confluence. <laughs> really, that's when you have three, but three, there was two ravens and Elijah. <laughs> and there they met. God had taken care of it ahead of time. God knows your life. If you get in trouble with the law or whatever it might be, God already knows. You don't have to beg him. He already knows you messed up. Don't you love that thing? What does that bulletin say? I think it says it. Is that that scripture in Hebrews? <laughs> Same yesterday, today, and forever. You know what I like about that? God took care of me yesterday, today, and forever. Took my sins yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I'm going to heaven. Yes. I'm going to heaven. I mean, I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be wonderful. But I got something to do here that's going to be awesome for here. Not going to be awesome for heaven. Heaven is going to be way awesomer. But then again, every time somebody gets saved, don't you hear that little jingle on the Christmas tree? <laughs> somebody gets saved and the angels get their wings. Regardless of what the facts are, the truth is, the truth is God has already given you whatever it is that you need. I know that for some of us, wait a minute here, because i, I got to go to the store right after church and get some hamburger for tonight so we can have tacos. In the fridge. Huh? In the fridge. It's in the fridge already. God already provided. <laughs> he knows all that. He'll provide. When you're in his will, this thing just flows. But you're crying out to God, you're not even close to being in the right position because of a lack of obedience. That's our part. Obey. Be obedient to his word. Life gets really, really good. You know, we don't go by feelings, we don't go by sight. But when you're in God's will, it, will, it feels good. And you see things that are wonderful, that are awesome. All right, I need to read some scriptures here. Okay, let's see. Well, what's that, honey? The reference, um, Genesis, Exodus, <laughs> Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, for six examples, but now. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I really hate to go back to, I mean, I don't necessarily hate, but I, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually end sometime, <laughs> but um, go ahead and go to 2 Peter 1, 3. I'm going to read those again. I'm going to read it out of the uh, Passion in a second, too. 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power, now, do you believe that God has divine power? Yes. So God is God in your world? God's got divine power. Now, he says in the scripture, he says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. You see, now people are going right away. Well, you know, there's a whole lot of needs outside of being godly. No, we need to get the whole scripture, right? But he starts off with the godly life. All right. He's given us everything we need for a godly life through our know. See, there's that knowledge again. Through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness. Now, listen to that same scripture now in the uh, Passion Version. Everything we could ever need for life, everything you could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. 
Is that not a marvelous scripture? Huh? It's already been deposited. Now, if you will accept that and believe that, you are on your way to an incredible, marvelous life. And that's all it takes. It's already there. It's a done deal. Everything we could have ever needed for life and godliness has already been in deposited in us by his divine power. Can he do that? Yes. No, can he do that? Yes. Do you really believe he can do that? Yes. So even in the midst of all the stuff that we've done and the, my, my crummy job and all the thoughts that go through, here he can actually put that power inside of me. Yes. Just like Romans 8.11 is finally coming alive to us. Power that raised Jesus' dead body from the grave. That's that same divine power. Lives where? Man, I'm starting to get really excited. I've always been excited about serving the Lord, but I've been a little bit on the on the rough side of or the jagged side or something like that. I don't know. But ever since I started having kids. Something changed inside of me. And I still didn't get it. But something changed. And I just started feeling it. And the more just pressing into God. I, I know, don't get, don't get mad at me for this, because I really don't mean to say anything bad. But I, I really stopped listening to other people and reading their books and all that kind of stuff. And I really did start just listening to God. But don't get me wrong now. I do read other books. And I get a lot of good stuff out of it. And I do listen to other preachers. But it's not found that way. Those things can enhance your walk and your life. But God makes it even simpler than that. I mean, I mean you can just spend time with him anywhere. And now think about this. I mean, I'm just a knucklehead kid. I'd been a teenager traveling around overseas. And, and when I got home, I'm unsaved. And I'm sitting in my backyard, and God speaks to me. I've had him speaking to me all my life. And he says, you didn't have to go there, John. He goes, I was here the whole time. I still didn't accept him for like 10 more years. But I could tell you countless stories of having conversations with God, and I'm still going, who are you? (laughs) And the whole time, he's leading me and guiding me. I mean, what a wonderful God we serve. He's so kind. He's so good. For all this, second part of the scripture, was lavished. You know what lavished means? Over the top. top. Lavished like butter. I always think of shaving cream. (laughs) Well, that's lather. I better not be flippant about that one, huh? Whipping cream. Whipping cream. For all, for all this has been lavished upon us through the rich experience. What kind of an experience? Rich. 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 rich exp- shh, quiet, rich. <laughs> the rich experience of knowing him. What a friend you have in Jesus. Yes. What a friend. You know, I was uh, last week in the prayer room. I hugged Teresa, I think it was in the prayer room. And she says, hi, friend, something like that. How are you? And I thought, how nice is that to be called a friend? Isn't that nice? Don't you want to be a friend? I mean, can you imagine how nice it is when someone says that you're my friend? You know, you hear that with the little kids all the time. You're my friend. Yet what a friend we have. In Je- it is a song, isn't it? What a friend we have in Jesus. He's your friend. Amen. You know what a friend does? friend takes care of you, looks out for you. Yeah. You know, looks out for you. you. <laughs> what did she say? He he does does you. You. Oh, 
<laughs> he doesn't unfriend you. He'll never unfriend you, block you, leave you, or forsake you. <laughs> He'll never cancel you. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him. I tell you, I've known the Lord for a long time. And, but all these puzzle pieces are, it's a synergistic thing where it's just getting greater and greater and greater and greater what he shows you. But that's, that's the Lord. See, there's never, there's never a plateau when you serve God. And I, I think, you know, I probably plateaued for a while while raising kids and just kind of cruised. Did, did a lot of ministry and stuff like that. But it was, a, a, a lot of it was just got into the routine. And this is what you do. And you, you go out and hand out tracts and you lead people to the Lord and you do this as opposed to being led by the Lord. And he may show you to do those very things and he may not. But you want to do what he's called you to do. You want him to lead. And every day it could be different. For all this was lavished upon you through the rich experience of knowing him. Knowing him is an experience. It's a rich, rich experience, and it gets richer the more you know. The more you know, the, more rich, the richer it gets. Yes. Of him who has called us by his name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Yes. Yes. Now he's going to just pour all this stuff, come to me, because there's so much in the goodness inside of me is now going to get poured out all over you. Yes. Yes. Who I am, what I've done. The only thing that you might be lacking is that knowledge, is that no. Because there is something about that no. Because you need to know him, right? Yeah. And then after you get to know him and you get saved, then you need to get to know him more. And that getting to know him more doesn't stop until we flap on out of here. Right. I can see that happening. I remember watching a preacher one time and he'd get on stage, man, and he would just shake. He'd shake and then he'd fall down. He's preaching. He was supposed to be preaching. I mean, he'd be preaching fire, hellfire and brimstone, whatever. He's just preaching. All of a sudden he starts shaking, fall on the ground and start bouncing on the floor. And he gets up and he says, man, he goes, I think that this one of these times I'm just going to shake on out of here and just be gone. I was thinking maybe I'll just flap on out of here. I mean, you never know how it's going to go. But if you see me on the floor flapping, leave me alone. Okay. So the only thing you might be lacking, uh, and I'm just throwing this out, would be this, this knowledge. And we're going to take care of that knowledge. Now, to do this, I was supposed to stop right now, but I'm going to read a couple more scriptures. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, because the first key that we mentioned in Luke a month or so ago was 1152. Remember that scripture, Luke 1152? Now, I'm going to read it to you in three different versions real quick, and then I will finish. Woe to you experts of the law, because you have taken away the key of to knowledge. See, the Pharisees back then, they took away the key to knowledge. But of course, we went through this and we got to Matthew 16 and verse 19 and 18 and, and 17 and 16 and 15. That talked about that. Because Jesus is talking about the keys and then he asked them, who do they say I am? Or who do you say I am? And Peter nails it. He nailed it. He had the key. The key to knowledge was knowing that he's the Messiah. Christ is the Messiah. That's it. That opens the door. Everything goes from there. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who were trying to enter. That's what the Pharisees were doing. Amplified version. Woe to you, lawyers, because you have taken away the key to knowledge or scriptural truth. You see, it's not just scripture, but there's the truth of 
and that's the, when we have the logos and the rhema. The Holy Spirit operates in rhema, the rhema word, right? Oh, yeah, that's his language. The written word's completely different. You understand the difference between the two, everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Woe to you, lawyers, because you have taken away the key to knowledge, scriptural truth. You yourselves did not enter, and you held back those who were entering by your flawed interpretation of God's word, your man-made traditions. So here's the thing. The Bible is clear on stuff. By your stripes, you, by his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Let's believe it. Let's believe it. And when the battles come, you remind the enemy of his position. Under my feet, you are defeated. You know, you don't have to battle the enemy. He's a defeated foe. But you do have to resist him. Resist him, get away, and he'll flee. Right. And the completion of that, that defeat will be seen uh, in, the, in, the, in the end, in the end of times. But he has been defeated. He, he can't kill you. The enemy can try to kill you, but he can't, can't kill you. Yes. But you can give in and allow things to send you off into your death. But no, he doesn't have that kind of power. Okay. All right? Woe to you by that flawed interpretation of God's word and your man-made traditions. There's a lot of traditions of men trying to explain away the truth of God's word. You know, when you're saved, you'll seriously understand the word of God, the essence, the rhema aspect of it, because God's spirit is going to make sure in your spirit you got the right stuff. He doesn't let any bad stuff come in here. It'll come in here and filter down to here. But you got to remember, tapping into the Holy Spirit leads and guides you into all truth. Amen. All truth. Don't have to worry about it. Don't need an interpreter. All truth. Message version. I, I usually don't use this, but I love the way it started out. You're hopeless, <laughs> you religion scholars. You took the key of knowledge, but instead of unlocking doors, what the key is for, you locked them. Well, come on. What are you wowing about? We did the same thing. We're still, they're still doing it. Well, that's what we talk about being free, you know? Free to be free to be freer. And I know it's hard for people to get up and dance and stuff like that and all this sissy stuff. You know? <laughs> and just because you dance doesn't mean you're free. But it's an awesome thing. I mean, I remember the biggest thing for me in being set free was raising my hands in church. Because we started off in a Pentecostal church. That's how, but, you know, I didn't. But that's when we got saved that we were in the Pentecostal church. And everybody raises their hands. And I'm thinking, man, you know, everybody's looking at me. Why are you looking at me? You know, I know I'm raising my hand. Why is everybody looking at me when I'm raising my hands? And then I found the key. I closed my eyes. I closed my eyes and raised my hand. Oh, then I'd find myself, what are you looking at me? No one's looking at me. No one's thinking about me. Are you self-centered so-and-so? <laughs> Nobody's thinking about you. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> might be different if you're dancing. They might look at you. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Well, I went to a men's thing. You get, anybody remember Dennis Trujillo? He was Mr. Natural. And he used to be with Ken Copeland Ministry and Billy Brim uh, at the time, way back. So this is going way back. We did a men's retreat. And so, and these were all gangbangers and all that kind of stuff. We're at the men's retreat, and there's a big room. It was, it was awesome. But, I mean, Dennis gets up there, and he's Mr. Universe, Mr. Universe Natural. Big, buff guy, but he says, red meat's of the devil. 
So I paid no attention to him after that, but no. <laughs> well, he had one thing wrong. Uh, the rest of it was really good. But these guys, he says, he goes, you guys need to just get free. He's talking to these tough guys. He says, you just need to dance before the Lord. So they're playing some music, and they're dancing. He goes, you just need to run around a little bit. Just run around, you know. And I look over the guy next to me, and he's doing chubby checkers, man. And he's just twisting away, and he's just, he's just free. I mean, we had to do the Pentecostal hop. You know, you know that's what you do when you're a Pentecost. You know, you got this dumb thing. It goes like this. I don't know what it is. You know, but you can be free. It's free because you you do it unto the Lord. You know, it's looking at you unless you're doing this. I mean, I don't know. You know I was looking at him. You hopeless. You're 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 religions. You religious scholars. You you took the key of knowledge. Instead of unlocking the doors, you locked them. Oh, but we're unlocking those things. Oh, we're, we're unlocking all of them. Amen. Every single one of them is not going to come through those doors. Oh, no. Oh, times are changing. There's a new wind a-blowing. <laughs> Holy Spirit is here. You lock them. You won't go in yourself, and you won't let anyone else in either. Man, I say, woe to you. You're in trouble, dude. It's just like the old causing a child to mess up and a millstone around your neck. You're in trouble. Don't be locking, don't be locking the Holy Spirit out. That's wrong. Passion version. What sorrow awaits you, experts, you religious law? Yeah, this sorrow is coming. For you, you removed the key, the key of knowledge from the people. Gosh, you know, you talk about a, a necessity to repent. That would be it right there. I mean, our hearts could have been right, but, man, we don't want to be a part of that. Not at all. You remove the key of knowledge from people. You don't enter the kingdom yourself, and you prevent others from doing so. We know that the key to knowledge begins with knowing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. We know that. And we know that in the knowing of Jesus, we have been given much. In 2 Peter 1, 3, everything we could ever need for life, everything you could ever need for this life on earth, anything and everything, has already been deposited in us by that divine power past tense. Can we just dwell on that? Can we just med meditate on that for, say, a week? And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up the following week. Nah, we're not going to finish up then. But we'll, we'll come to church and we'll see what happens again. Does that sound good? But these things are worthy of meditation. They really are. We're going deep. And he's going to take us way deeper than we could ever have imagined. And it is going to be wonderful. Give the Lord a praise, everybody. Woo!